1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you be ignorant. I would not have you ignorant. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away uh, unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now, I've been out a week. I was gone last week. We was over at Bible Baptist Church, uh, preaching there for Brother Bill Baker. And uh, I was in the whole service, taught the Sunday school hour, preached the message, preached the night message, the whole thing. So I was out. So I'm, we, were, we were teaching along the lines of gifts. Jeremiah had asked me to cover some material on the gifts. There's a lot of questions on the gifts in the Word of God. I understand that. So we're in a series of lessons on the gifts. And we had just covered the sign gifts. And if you remember, when I talked about that, um, we, and I'll just rehash just a little, bring you up to speed. Got a few extra folks today. We talked about the sign gifts things as during the time of, they showed up three times, basically three times and, uh, in history in the Bible, and they're going to show up again. And let me give that to you again. I taught this once, run all the verses on it, showed you the things, but they showed up during the time of Moses and Aaron. They used signs. And they were able to, you remember, we went through the whole thing. I won't do it again. The snake thing and all that. Some of you still laughing, okay? Thought I was going to get out snakes, but no. Uh, then they showed up during the time of Elijah and Elisha. And they were able to do signs. Raise the dead, heal the sick, that sort of thing. Call fire down from heaven. All related. And then they showed up the next time. Then you have that vacuum kind of in the scriptures. Now there's always been miracles and the Bible is a book of miracles, records the miracles of God, which fall into some of the, cate well, the category of sign gifts. We'll talk about that in a minute or we have. Then the third time they showed up in history was during the time of Christ and the apostles. And you had them showing back up because Christ was the son of God, the only begotten of the father and the Jews seek after sign. Remember, we covered all those verses, talked about all that. And what I'm doing with these series of classes, I believe, is helping you understand when somebody comes along and asks you in our church or someplace else, why don't you speak in tongues? Why don't you heal the sick? Why don't you raise the dead? And it helps us to have an answer for every man that may have a question. We need a reasonable biblical scriptural answer for that. And then, uh, so we laid all that down. We talked about that. Then they're going to show up again, and I'll, I'll have a reference to it in a moment. They're going to start showing up again at the end of the church age, at the entering in of the time of the Antichrist. Yeah. So we live in the last days, so you're going to see an influx of that more now than you ever did. And it started back in the 1800s and the Azuzu street meetings and things, you begin to see some of these things working. So, well, was God in that? God allowed that. But let me, let me just say this right now. The devil, just like in the days of Moses, was able to come up with their own serpent they cast down. But Moses' serpent, which was of God, was able to devour those serpents. Don't you forget that. And in the days of Elijah and Elisha, the prophets or Baal were there and that's what it was about. They were calling on their gods and cutting themselves and trying to prove that their God was God. When Elijah said, let's this day see whose God is who. And he called fire down from heaven, consumed everything they were doing. That, that miracle happened, but they had their, they had their powers too, but they succumbed to the almighty power of God. Don't you ever forget that. And then in the days of Jesus, when they walked upon this earth, in the days of Paul and the apostles, Jesus did his miracles. And then there among them arose others uh, wanting to learn how to do these same things and thought they could seek it through education and through money and other ways. And Paul disputed that and set that thing aright and says, no, that ain't going to happen. And you say, well, what's that picture? Pictures the devil and his crowd, the religious crowd. They're going to try to perform the gifts that God and God alone are only are able to pr produce. So you're going to see it. 
And so in the end time, you're going to see that come arise. You say, why? Because evil, evil men and seducers of men shall wax great and religion will step up and to convince the gains here and convince anybody else, they're going to do signs and wonders. The Bible says lying wonders to get you to believe it. And I believe we live, live in that eve of that time now. And it started during the 1800s and maybe a little earlier and runs through and is running now. Now, a lot of my lecture, my materials comes from uh, other Bible believing men and teachers as we study the word of God. And I'm careful about who I tell you I read after and follow because you got to sort it out. Bible in one hand, Holy Ghost in the heart and the book in the other. And you stay with the book and the Holy Ghost. So keep that thing right. So um, people say, well, how do you learn all this? Well, you, you have to be given to the word of God and study. And people say, well, have you believed this all your life? Yes, just about all my life since I got saved and got in school, got in Bible school. And I was fortunate and blessed to be able to sit under a man called Jack Grigsby. I had his Bible pretty straight, man. And Brother Tom sat there. I got some folks here that identify with that same church. Thank you, brother. Missionary from uh, Ukraine in this morning. Good to see you, brother. Uh, I know you came just to hear this class. You didn't come for Dr. McBride. Just grinning back here like a possum eating pokeberries. I love it. Brother, how young were you when you first came to Berean Baptist Church? What was your... You had a bus. About a 1946 bus. What year? I don't remember the year, but I was probably 25. Yeah. yeah. Been doing this a long time. <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah, good. Yeah, long time. Just wonderful to have you. Okay, let's move on with this. We are, we have uh, specifically been dealing with sign gifts here, um, of, of which tongues is the most asked about and healing probably the second most asked about in the sign gifts. Now, once you understand, there are roughly 18 gifts to be found in the New Testament. Uh, 18, 19, you might find the word gift connected with uh, another uh, ministry of some sort. But uh, there are only just a few sign gifts, and you've got to get the sign gifts down. And if you understand the difference between sign gifts and the gifts, because their gifts were for the church, but the sign gifts fit in through the, the time that the Jews were struggling with believing that Jesus Christ was the only begotten of the Father. And the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to, to date us right here. So we have learned that there were three periods and I gave you those. So all nine gifts mentioned here in the text that I just read, there are nine gifts mentioned here. And I'll never forget Bruce McDowell and I were holding a tent meeting in uh, Akron, Ohio. I can't remember the pastor's name, but I remember the account of it. And we set the tent up. We had this big sign that I had painted and Tom Darty had painted and it said, standing on the King James Bible without apology to anyone, <laughs> preaching the, the grace, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Big old sign, you know, stuck it up there. We happened to drive around the block, and around the block was another tent going up. And it said, uh, we're having a tent meeting this week. All are welcome. All nine gifts in operation under this tent tonight. And I'm thinking, wow, <laughs> a little contrasty here. Say so that was that group, and we were. Say, what'd you do? We went ahead and had our meeting. When we were done, they were still going. Say, what'd you do? We went over and sat in a night. I wanted to see these all nine gifts working. I didn't see anything. I seen the Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken bucket passed around about thirty-five times. You're making fun. I I know Elijah did that stuff. John the Baptist did that stuff, but be careful here. But um, so all nine gifts are mentioned here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 8, word of wisdom. Verse 8 again, word of knowledge. Verse 9, gifts of faith. Gift, can I say this? People get all goofed up on faith today. That Bible says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, well, at least I quote it wrong. That's one of my favorite passages in the Word of God. Let me get every word of it because when the Holy Spirit chooses the words, uh, 220, when he chooses the words and puts them down and records them, they're there forever. 
and we need to get it right. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live, be very careful right here, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That faith comes from God. Not from Wall Street, not from the economy, not from your mental fortitude, not from your ability to say no, not because it takes a village, you know, we could go on and on, but from God. That's a special faith, a spiritual faith, which comes by God. Faith, this kind of faith, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Uh, most people, they have no idea what kind of faith they're talking about when they start talking. So that's kind of why we have teachers in Galatians 5. Let me back it up with another scripture. Galatians 5 verse 22. Now, I don't want you to confuse the fruit of the spirit, which are also nine in number with the gifts of the spirit. That happens a lot. And you got to have that thing straight. It's called rightly dividing. Watch what he says. He says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness. There's your word, faith. Those are all spiritual gifts of the Holy Ghost of God that are only imparted to the believer, amen, or the lost as they're trying to get saved, like faith, margin of faith. So be careful with that. There's, let me come on back. I'm giving you these. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, thoughts, and these scriptures, verse 8, uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and then verse 9, gift of faith. That's just not something you codger up. Well, I got enough faith to believe that. No, you don't. What well, for the grace of God and the faith of God, you fail miserably and wind up in hell. Amen, Brother Phil. That's right. So here, healing, verse 9, that's one of the gifts, healing, healing. Now, we don't have healers today. Now, there are some said healers today, but nobody has the ability to heal today as the Apostle Paul did. And I'll cover that in a minute and show you where the Apostle Paul had the power to heal and where in the book of Acts early in his ministry in our transitional book, he comes through and he's healing people. And I'll show you some other accounts. Then I'll take you over to another book in the book of Luke and show you where, or no, Philippians chapter two, I'll, I'll find it where he left someone sick because he said some of these things are going to pass off the scene and it would be the sign gifts, not all the gifts. And you got to make a distinction there. Be careful. So healing verse 10 miracles. Now we see miracles in that when somebody gets saved, it is a miracle. Amen. But we don't see people walking on water. We don't see those kind of miracles. You say, why? They're connected with signs and the sign gifts. So be careful with your miracles. Verse 10, prophesying. Prophesying was something that was done by the prophets. And you had the apostles and the prophets in Ephesians chapter 2 that showed up first, who are the pillar and the ground of the church. And then they kind of fade off the scene, as Paul said they would in the book of Corinthians in another place. And then at the chapter four in Ephesians, it said you have some teachers, some pastors, and some evangelists. But we don't have any more apostles and we don't have any prophets. Oh, oh brother Phil, is that's just dividing it down too much. Are, are you sure there's no apostles today? Well, number one, an apostle had to have seen the Lord Jesus Christ with his naked eyeball. And I know they'll take it the next day. Boy, I see Jesus standing at the foot of my bed. I get, and you think, oh my goodness, I got a live one here. When Peter said that no man had seen him at any time until his appearing, I'll stick with the book. Okay, so there's prophesying. You say, well, why don't we prophesy today? You prophesy, you preach on prophecy. Well, listen, everything I say is taken right out of the word of God. It may seem fresh and new to you or somebody else, but it's not. It's right there. And we don't have any prophets anymore because we have the completed canon of the word of God, the completed scripture. And in this book, you say, well, that's awful narrow, Brother Phil. That's, and I say it every time I get up. That's a narrow book right there. Amen. Man, people want to grab everything but the book. Let's stay with the book. So there's that uh, prophesying in verse 10, discerning of spirits. Now, 
that one's in that list of things, but take your Bible and go to 1 John chapter 4. And discerning of spirits is still here today, and it's done through the Word of God and the Holy Ghost of God. It, it's one that didn't pass. It's not one of the signs, but you better be able to discern the Spirit. Paul said, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. But look what John said. And John was one of those apostles, and John was around these days. And John's writing to the church in the book of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and the book of Revelations, and St. John. St. John's a little early for him, but watch this. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Verse 1, chapter 4. But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world today. You better discern the spirits. You'll be duped in a heartbeat. Somebody will come along preaching you some craziness, and you'll believe it because it feels good. Be careful with your feelings. Be careful with your feelings. Um, we're emotional folks. We're made up. We're human beings, and we have feelings. Uh, we have character traits, we have character flaws, we have character perfections, if you please. Uh, people are known by their character. We taught on that different times. But I wanted you to see that. And then 10, verse 10, back in our text, tongues. And tongues is that booger bear that everybody asks about today, the flag flies. And, oh, you guys don't speak in tongues. I've been asked right here in this church, why don't you have a healing line in your church years ago when I first got here? I said, uh, check with pastor on that. I, I don't know what was going on. <laughs> and uh, so we didn't start a healing line, by the way. You say, why? We, we're not healers. We're preachers and teachers. And we should be doing the great commission, if I'm understanding the word of God right. And that thing there, we're to go out in the nation preaching, bap, preaching and teaching and baptizing those that believe. And, and the great commission, people think, well, it's just go, just go, go, go. No, it's teaching. Uh, there's three things to that right there. So tongues, and we've talked about tongues extensively the last two weeks I'm, or a week prior. I'm not going to do that again. And then verse 10, interpretation of tongues. There's one. Nobody, nobody worries about that one. They go, oh yeah, we're speaking tongues up there. Yeah, but nobody's around to interpret anything. You say, what happened? Well, it's one of the, de it's you better, if you're going to speak in tongues, you better have an interpreter. And I took the, the time. I took the time to explain that to you, and I'm not going to reiterate here too much, but I have two daughters. They both speak in tongues, but they learned it. They speak Spanish fluently, backwards and forwards. Their husbands speak it. But I can't, when they, when I get, they, they're coming in too, by the way, Beth and Jordan's getting to come home in a couple weeks and uh, for, for three weeks. Then they hit it again, and man, I'm looking forward to seeing the grandkids and all that. And those grandkids, I got a 16-year-old granddaughter down there speaks fluent Spanish. She speaks in tongues. I can't, her and her mother get to talking to her dad. I say, hey, shut up. I can't understand what you're saying. You're talking about. I'm paranoid getting old, you know, and it just, and you know, they're listening this morning. So I said all that for them. No, just <laughs> grandpa, you got it, Steve. Gray-headed grandpa. But it's not like it was in those days when God gave the power in Acts chapter 2, for them to be understood in their languages. And we went through all that, not going back through it again. So there's the interpretation of tongues. And by the way, they have learned to interpret when the people come down from Canada and other places that come down to work on the mission field. There's some other church opportunities and things going on out there where they're at in that part of Mexico and Arizona. And they come down and they need interpreters because they can't speak the language and they don't have the gift of tongues at all. And so they use Ashland and Bethany and Jordan to come, well, Jordan, he said, they can't understand me anyway. He has a little speech impediment and he said, they, they don't know if I, I just shake my head. Yeah. So it's cute. I like it, but they interpret for these folks. Well, let's move on. That's the interpretation of tongues. Fourthly, nine in number and not to be confused with the gifts of the spirit mentioned in Galatians chapter five, verse 22, which we just went to and it's nine. Nine uh, basic gifts that are mentioned that Paul saw fit to mention in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And then he mentions the nine fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 2. And they have to do with producing more fruit. Uh, another worthy note is that the sign gifts will also be used in the coming of the Antichrist and during the tribulation. Would you take your Bible and go to second Thessalonians chapter two? A lot of folks messed up right here. Oh no, you know, they're speaking in tongues up there. They're of God. They're walking on another level. They have a deeper life. Be careful. 
1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, any, any student of the Word of God knows exactly where I'm going. But you need this verse. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and the Apostle Paul here talking about the time of the end, the time of the Antichrist, the Antichrist to come with all power. Watch it. Look at verse uh, hmm, 8. And 2 Second Thessalonians 2, 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Now that wicked, capital W, personification, the Antichrist himself, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The Lord is going to take care of that rascal one of these days. Watch it. Even him, again, a reference to the Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan. Spells it right out for us. Thank God for the King James. With all power, here it is, all power, signs, and lying wonders. He's going to come on the scene manifesting the sign gifts, even raising the dead. You know, he's got, a, he's got a wound. He was wounded nigh unto death, the scripture teaches us, and then he was healed. He's able to give life to that, that image, just like Daniel chapter 9 and Daniel chapter 10. What's all foreshadowed in prophecy, it's going to happen. We're on the eve of that as I speak. But you have a movement in this country that everything's okay. Let's forget about doctrine, forget about where we really stand. Let's just have a big time, entertain each other, meet, eat, greet, whatever the Epicurean theory is of our day. And it's not about refurbishing, refortifying, rebuilding, and going out and telling somebody else about Christ. It's about fun and games. And here we are with 35 games to play back here at Learning, teaching our kids. Amen. <laughs> I didn't think a street meeting would go over good with VBS, so we're doing VBS in the church. Okay, and uh, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, now don't you think for a minute that some signs and lying wonders aren't just what he says they are, with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And that's what's wrong with religious folks. They're not saved, they're religious, and they want to follow something. And boy, the devil will fill that vacuum in heartbeat. So the, these signs and gifts will show back up in the last part of the church age into the tribulation. In that time. So the true church period would not see the sign gifts in use as Paul the Apostle tells of a passing away. Take your Bible and go, you need this first. 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Note number one, where am I getting the verse? Right out of Corinthians to Gentile church, which is a picture of the church even today. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7, 6, 6, 7, and 8. He says, uh, rejoice, uh, rejoice that not in it. Well, let me back up. Doth not, uh, back up one more. Number four, charity suffer long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. And I think he says charity is the best gift. We'll talk about that if we get time. I'm watching the time. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Verse six, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Amen. It's time to rejoice in the truth. Watch. He says, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, remember we talked about that, no more prophets. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Why are they going to fail, Brother Phil? Because if they're extra biblical and don't line up with the word of God, then they're false and should be noted as false and pointed up as false. Watch, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Well, why are they going to cease? Tongues were for a sign. Gave you the verse in the last couple of lessons. Jews seek after a sign. Started with Moses, Elijah, time of Christ. And it was all for the Jew. The Jew is the chosen people. He was trying to reach the Jew, trying to reach the Jew, trying to reach the Jew. Now, a Gentile don't seek after a sign. He seeks after wisdom and knowledge according to the word of God. So the signs are not manifest during the church age. Now, I've said a lot of words in a short space, but you need to get that down or you'll be confused as a member of a church and a saved person. You say, well, I... Oh, I never heard that before. It's Bible teaching. Watch. He says, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. You say, why? Why knowledge? Well, there's nobody who just rise up with no education, no learning, no Bible education, no nothing, and have all the knowledge that you get from a man that's been 40 or 50 years in the book. You say, why? Because we got the book. That's why. And if you're not given to the book, the book is not going to be given to you. Amen. 
Watch. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part shall be done away with. You say, why? Because I don't need it anymore. And we have the truth, the word of God. And I, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now that's, that's pretty straightforward teaching there. So once I got some light on the thing, and around here I've heard Jeremiah teach a series of lessons on the doctrine of illumination. And brother, when a person gets saved and starts learning the word of God, uh, the doctrine of illumination comes into play and they begin to learn things in the scriptures they never knew uh, were there and they didn't understand. They were in the dark about it and all of a sudden the light comes on. They're illuminated. They get an education. Don't even know they're getting an education, but it helps them stand in this evil and wicked day against, against fable, against religion, false religion. Uh, against philosophy. A lot of philosophy slips in. Oh, they're doing it down there at the university. I think we ought to do that here too. No, let's do it the way the book says it. Well, you're just old fashioned. You'll have everybody, you know, looking Amish. No, no, the jards come. They're ex-Amish. They come. They don't dress Amish anymore. Uh, I've been around them a little bit. They eat like the Amish eat. Yeah, you see that crowd eating, man. That's my crowd. That eating, oh, move on here. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I give you that. For now we, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, one day we're going to get a little more light on this thing. And I know in part, but then shall I know uh, even as I am known. And that's the good thing about getting to heaven. You'll be known as you're known. A lot of folks, we get questions all the time. Well, you know, my, my daddy died. Well, I know him when I get to heaven. I'm thinking, my goodness, if he's saved and you're saved, you both step into heaven, you're going to know him according to scripture. Just a sidebar. All right. And, and, and let me get the rest of that. And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, and you notice that faith, hope, and charity. Uh, but the greatest of these is charity. You want to do something, man, forget about your healing, forget about your tonguing. I mean, put some love in action, do something for somebody. Amen. We got a benevolence box back there. Put a couple hundred dollars in that thing. Pastor will see it gets the right place. Say, oh, well, I, oh, I'm just looking for the deeper life. Charity. <laughs> All right. Paul had the gift of healing in the early days. Let me give this to you. I have time. Uh, take your Bible, go to Acts 14, 10. Let me show it to you. It's not a paradox. It's not a contradiction in the Bible. It's transition. And when you get in the book of Acts, known as a transitional book, things were changing from Jewish to Gentile. And when they changed from Jew to Gentile, things changed a little bit because we have the completed word of God by 90 AD from John and then it's passed down, makes it all the way through. It's a received book. It's a given book. It's a preserved book. It's an infallible book. And we go on and on with that. But in Acts chapter 14, now Paul don't get saved till about Acts, 9, Acts chapter 9. And in Acts chapter 8, he's watching Stephen get stoned, Jew, preaching to Israel, and, and they killed him, and they rejected Christ. And then Paul gets saved, and God calls him. You know the story and how that thing goes. But come on over here in chapter 14. He still has, he's an apostle born out of due time, the scripture says. And in verse 10, Acts chapter 14, verse 10, the scripture says, um, and Paul here, he's at Iconium, I believe. He's in Derby at Lystra. And uh, he's, he, there's an impotent man uh, at Lystra and he's healed there and Paul has the power to heal him. I want you to see this because I'm going to show, take you to another place where he doesn't heal somebody, but it's later on in his life after the transition is transpiring and things are changing and you need this. It's the kind of stuff you need when somebody comes to you with a, I just don't know why you don't have a healing line up here, man. Stand people up, get your oil out, lay hands on them and them with oil and man, let them walk. Well, my wife would be the first one in line. She hadn't walked in 12 years. Oh, Brother Phil, you're eat up. I'm just being honest with you, scriptural with you here today. So in Acts, if you would, 14.10, and you come down through verse 8, go to verse 8. And there sat a certain man, Alistra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked. And the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceived that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And, and he leaped 
leaped and walked. You say, what was that? It's a picture of Paul healing somebody right there. Watch it. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices saying in the, in the speech of Lyconians, the gods, and they had that wrong, are come down to us in the likeness of men. You say, well, what just happened there? Well, let, I just read you verse through verse 10. I said, well, he healed somebody. Uh, in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ because he had the apostolic power. And I'm not saying that term loosely, not just to throw it out there. It's characteristic to the time of the apostles and he healed the guy. You say, why? Because they were seeking after a sign and they need to see, see that sign to know that what they were saying was the truth. You say, well, why? Well, they didn't have... Uh, they didn't have the word of God. And so God used the apostles with that power to do those things at that time. And that's the thing that's passed off the scene. Take your Bible one more time. Go to Acts chapter 16, verse 18. Verse chapter 16, verse 18. Now, chapter 16, you're, Paul finds Timothy and you're getting close to the great debate. Paul's second missionary journey into si with Silas has come up on the scene. But there in Acts chapter 16, verse 18, you find him performing another one of these miracles. And it's uh, the demons are cast out and Paul and Silas beat. Now, you don't see a lot of demon possessed people uh, getting the devils cast out of them today. You say, well, they're just staying anymore, Brother Phil. Oh, have you been duped? Remember my series on de demonology and my series on other spirits? You say, oh, they're here, <laughs> alive and well. <laughs> and they're against uh, the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Okay, watch this. And Paul performs another healing about verse 16, 17, and 18. But that certain woman named Lydia... That seller of purple, let me get in the right place here, 16, that'll work, 14, 15. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us saying, if ye have judged me to be faithful, the Lord come unto my house and abide there. And she, she constrained us. Then here we go. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Now that's a, that's nothing godly right there. That's ungodly. Watch it. He says, which brought her master much gain by soothsaying. Now, if you think they're in a foul spirit, another spirit or a devil connected with the soothsayers and the caro players and the card players and the palm readers and all that other circus clown act. You've been duped, man. You've been watching. You've been watching CNN or Fox or something. I don't know. Watch the same followed Paul. And us and cried, these men are the servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Don't you think for a minute, a demon possessed person don't know who you are and what you're doing. They know better than the saved crowd knows. You say, oh, get in a third world country, go to Haiti, go to Mexico. Brother Maris here, go to the Ukraine. You probably see some of that stuff over there. I mean, and it's right here. You probably drive downtown Larchburg, get your palm read today for 20 bucks. I don't recommend it. Okay, it's a new, now watch it. And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit, so he's talking to it. That's a false, foul spirit. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out uh, the same hour. <laughs> Say, what happened? Well, he, she got healed. <laughs> he cast the devil out of her. Amen. Uh, that's Acts 16, verse 18. If you look for that reference, I'm showing you the work of Paul in those days. That, um, then look at it one more time. Yeah, I'm about out of time. 1912, 1912, the Apostle Paul. Then we'll hurry on to that next place. 1912 in your scriptures. And that's Acts 1912. And this is the miracles of Paul recorded here in verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So he was, he did have the sign gifts working, watch. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. You say, well, you don't believe in aprons and handkerchiefs? Not today. Apostolic times you got it, but there's guys promoting that stuff. I got a, a red string from Reverend Ike one time. 
You say, do you send him money? No, somebody sent him a dollar in my name just as a joke to see what he would do. He wrote me a letter back, said if I took that red thread, put it up in the window, prayed three times a day, and oh, by the way, in parenthesis, send $20 a month for the first year, I'd be prosperous the rest of my life. So said, what'd you do, Brother Phil? I didn't send him a dime. You say, why? I didn't need his handkerchief. Didn't believe in it for this day. Oh, wow. I probably still got the letter someplace if somebody wants to subscribe. He's probably dead and gone by now. But Anyway, Paul did not have to use the gift of healing in this latter years. He didn't have it. Take your Bible. Last verse I'm going to give you, Philippians 2, 26 and 27. You need to see this because it showed up in the book of Philippians, which follows up a whole lot later than in the book of Acts when he's, he's, he's born his apostolic son. He's getting ready to pass off the scene. Matter of fact, he's probably in jail right now, probably nigh unto being killed himself, martyred himself. And he says this, for he longed after you, I'm sorry, he longed after you all and was full of heaviness. This is the apostle Paul, because that he had heard that he had been sick. Somebody had been sick. Watch it. Verse 27, for indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. You say why? He couldn't heal him. He, he, he couldn't get it done. But the gift of mercy, which is still an act today, pastor preaches on mercy quite a bit. Once in a while, you'll hear him mention it. You say why? Brother, it's a gift from God. So I want you to see the difference between the sign gifts and the gifts. I'm out of time I'm done and we'll talk about the other gifts next time we meet and I've got a whole list of them someplace yeah right here but I don't have time the 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 the, the spirit the gift of helps we'll talk about that the, the gift of administration the gifts of grace and ministering the gift of teaching the gift of encouragement the gift of giving the gift of leadership and the gift of mercy and have scripture in the new testament for the church those are the gifts and they all tie in with the, the gift which is the greatest and that's charity and that's doing something for the cause of Christ no mysticism no false doctrine here so uh, it's on tape. You can re go back and get it if you need it. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for an opportunity and a chance to preach your word and teach. I ask God your suit of blessing to each person that has come out. And Lord, may we see our class grow a little bit. People come to the uh, full assurance of the word of God and the understanding that they can stand an evil day and be a good witness for your part. Bless now. The preaching is coming up very soon. Bless Brother McBride. Calm his nerves and his spirit and Lord, allow him to speak with boldness and power and allow him to enjoy his, his self and his ministry and his salvation this morning. Bless our pastor and those that come to sing and the people that come in after a while. Save that soul that's nearest hell. Bless our day and our VBS. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Good morning.